This video in the SQL Fundamental Series will look at the Having Clause that we use in conjunction with the Group By Clause for aggregating data. We'll be working with the Student Teams database and I've included the URL here just in case you need a reminder that you can build the Student Teams database using the scripts provided at this URL. So let's look at the Having Clause. So sometimes when we're working with aggregated data, we might want to filter the output based on some of the uh, aggregated values. Before filtering aggregate values, let's assume that we have a school that wants to list how many students are in each course in the fall and spring semesters. So the grouping would be based on the year, then by the semester, and then by the course. So we see our example output of the year 2010, the fall and spring semester, we have a course English and Math in the fall semester and English the same course repeating in the spring semester and we have our student count. What if the list should only show classes with more than 40 students? If that's the case, then we're going to eliminate one of those rows of output. And that's an example of where we will make use of the having clause to filter out classes with a student count less than 40. Before we look at using the having clause, let's look at an aggregate query without having. We're going to show the average evaluation scores for each student in each team. So in this uh, SQL statement, I'm looking at team ID, student ID, eval item ID, and then I'm getting the average of the scores. I'm working with the student table joined to evaluations on primary key student ID to evaluate foreign key. Then I join that result set with eval item scores, and I'm joining that with evaluations primary key eval ID and eval item scores eval ID as the foreign key. We have the group by clause where we include any of the uh, columns in the select clause that are not aggregate functions, and I have the order by clause just to sort output to make it a little more readable. So when we run that query, this would be our result. So for example, we're seeing within Team ID develop a particular student, AKRY, ACRY, and that student has three eval items, contribute, interpersonal, and reliable, with scores of 90, 90, and 100, respectively. So now let's add a having clause where we say we only want to see evaluation scores for students with a score of an average above 95. So what we'll do is add the having clause after the group by clause. Having is the, the keyword. Repeat the aggregate function and then put the criterion after that. And then we keep our sorting order by uh, clause. And so this is the result that we see here. We're seeing only the uh, records where the average score is greater than 95. So I'm going to switch over to SQL Developer, and I have that SQL statement. I will run that, and I will get the same output. I can change this and say, uh, oh, let's say uh, greater than or equal to 98. Whoops, I did the wrong. Equal to 98 and run that. And I'm getting a different result based on a different criterion. So, uh, in this example, we're going to look at the evaluation scores, the average below 80. And we see that result set, and you can look down through the column on average score to make sure it's meeting the criterion specified. Now you can filter individual rows in the WHERE clause, and then filter the aggregate values in the HAVING clause, so you can do both of these. And in this example, extending what we've seen before, I'm going to limit the team to sys designers and keep the having clause at average score less than 80 and then run that set and I only get two rows of output for B Smith for contribute and reliable with a score below 80. So once again 
you filter individual rows in the where clause. You filter the aggregate values in the having clause. So we've covered the having clause and how to filter those, and we've looked at an example of filtering based on having and where.